Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of HSP TV. I am your host, Barbara, and today I am joined by the wonderful Catherine Wood. And we will be talking today about unlocking your intuition through rest, especially for the more sensitive people among us. So if you consider yourself to be a highly sensitive person, an introverted person, uh, an empath person, or just in general, a little bit different from other people, then this might be a really awesome talk for you. So stay tuned. And for right now, Catherine, it's a joy to have you. I've been looking forward to talking to you and having this wonderful deep talk today. I am so happy to be here. And um, when you shared how our conversation was going to flow today, and I realized that I flow in exactly the same way, I was like, oh, this is going to be a natural. <laughs> right? It's so wonderful to connect with people who are on the same wavelength and have a matching type of energy where you can just be in the moment and just see wherever the conversation takes you. And I also have it that we've earned this way of being in our businesses. Yes, exactly. Uh, because uh, if, if, I don't know if you are an entrepreneur, watcher, listener, viewer of today's episode. But if you are, and I don't know if you're a starting entrepreneur or a more experienced entrepreneur, but there will always be people who will tell you how to run your business and what is wise to do when it comes to marketing or sales or planning or accounting or whatever topic is relevant to your business. And what we talked about before we started recording today is that we've learned that it's about finding what works for you not following what works for somebody else but following or discovering what works for you and then just doing that right yeah and saving yourself probably tens of thousands of dollars that you don't spend in these hype marketing tactics that kind of get you when you're down or feeling insecure and will probably reclaim lots of hours of time on your business or your relationship through uh, through really trusting, trusting in your own intuitive way. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think intuition is key in these things. And for most of us, uh, especially when you're starting out, when you're new to personal development and your entrepreneurial journey, intuition might be something that you've uh, suppressed for most of your life, because that is what happens to a lot of us. It, it was happening to me. I, I'm, I'm guessing that it also happened to you, Catherine, when you were younger. And that's because our society was very much a logical society where it was about facts and reason and, and, and the mind and intuition comes from the heart. It's something that cannot be explained, that cannot be scientifically proved. And that is sometimes also very difficult to explain to other people because well, it's, it's a feeling <laughs> right yeah yeah I mean my father is an accountant and I'm very much like my father I'm also a former senior economist for the U.S. government that's really where my journey started and and transferred into entrepreneurship and um I had no idea what intuition meant and, and I was completely disconnected from my intuition as a child I was so steeped in that uh, do everything right, get things perfect, be the the good girl in every sense of the word that I was completely disconnected from that intuitive knowing. And it's truly my entrepreneurial journey that I have to thank for connecting me not only with my cerebral knowing, which is very in, smart and, and mm -hmm. clever, but also with that deep felt sense of my intuition and that, um, that willingness to trust myself and my own approach, my own way, my own style of running business. And as I've leaned into that, I've had a lot more fun. I've uh, made a lot more money and I've reclaimed a lot more time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying because your story could have been my story. So if you recognize our stories, then it would be awesome if you could let that know in, in the comments below this video because we always love connecting with people. But I have the exact same thing. When I was younger, um, the people made me feel like it wasn't okay to be me. I have this intuitive knowing and I knew things and it scared people. They were like, oh, how do you know that? You have no business knowing that. And I, I couldn't explain how I knew 
knew it. I just, I knew. <laughs> and that scared a lot of people. And uh, things like you're far too sensitive or you need to grow a thicker skin or don't take everything so personal in combination with actual scaredness of people uh, turned me away from trusting in myself and in my natural gifts. And it took a heavy burnout and then the journey uh, of becoming an entrepreneur and, and then discovering everything about yourself because the entrepreneurial journey I think is maybe the best way of really diving into who you are and what your gifts are and how to best operate within your parameters to have a successful business and a fulfilling life it's it's very rewarding it's I have a really funny story about this so um, I would say one of the testimonials I get from clients more than anything else is they tell me, uh, you're the best bullshit detector I know. <laughs> yes. And I think that's because of this very thing that we're talking about, because as an empath, I sense people's emotions mm. oftentimes well before they sense them or can connect with them or even put words to them themselves. And we so often try to lie to ourselves, right? We try so often try to deceive ourselves so as to keep ourselves safe and mm. protected and comfortable and, and in a familiar, safe place. And that is so often what gets in the way of tapping into our potential. And so when I was able to really connect with this this gift as just that as a gift, I, I started to have a lot more fun in my coaching because I was able to reconnect with all of these parts of myself that, you know, to use your words, what you said before, like that I had clamped down on as a young child that I thought were weird or were unacceptable or, you know, someone smiling and I have this wave of grief within mm -hmm. my body or someone's yelling at me and you know, I can just tell that they're heartbroken mm -hmm. because I can feel it and it's very visceral. Yes. And um, I think that that's kind of some of the, some of the magic we bring to our work. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. And it was also one of the things that was extremely confusing to me when I was younger, because all of a sudden I would be hit by this wave of grief. And my mother would ask, why are you crying? And did somebody hurt you? Did somebody call you a name? And it was no, 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 no. no. Why are you crying? Yeah, I don't know. And before I discovered that it's very normal for people like you and me to experience other people's emotions as if they are our own. I always thought what I'm feeling is mine. So I need to have an explanation for for it and I didn't have an explanation so it was very confusing at first and now I agree with you I am also a very good bullshit detector <laughs> I know immediately when people are being truthful and sometimes they don't even have to open their mouth to just already sense it and within the job that we are doing it's actually a huge gift because I can read between the lines I can hear what my clients are not saying what they're not voicing and that means that I can intuitively um, hone in on that and uh, adjust my coaching or whatever, or my healing or whatever it is that I'm doing to best suit what they actually need, which sometimes might be completely different from what they think they need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, um, I have such strong, I have such a strong reaction to this conversation because when I think about the journey as a young, sensitive entrepreneur, I feel like the online marketing world takes advantage of our sensitivities mm -hmm. through through these just this manipulative copy and these sales tactics. Yes. And our, we need to protect our sensitivities. We need to protect our empathic qualities and have an eye on allowing them to be taken advantage of. You know, I spent so much money on marketing my business in my early years because mm -hmm. I um, was disconnected with my intuition. I thought I didn't, well, I didn't trust myself. And so I, I defaulted to someone else's expertise. I yes. wanted to find the right program, the right consultant, the right coach who could just tell me what to do. And I would follow what they say. And, you know, tens of thousands of dollars later, I was trying to follow someone else's system or sales tactics that was completely out of alignment, out of out of integrity with my own values. And I had become completely disconnected with myself. So mm -hmm. how the heck 
or my people going to find me when I wasn't doing business my intuitive way? I agree with you. I've had similar stories, tens of thousands of dollars into coaches programs and things that then teach them, teach you their thing. And, and I went for it, right? Because we are motivated and we want success and we want results. And they say that they have the answer to the problem that we are facing. And usually it's getting more clients and then they have the solution that's guaranteed to bring in clients. And uh, they are well-known people, well-respected people often big names in the industry or sometimes uh, multimillionaires or children of multimillionaires so you have a certain expectation of them and you expect that they know what they're talking about you expect that they have a business that brings in millions so they know how things work and uh, you are indeed not trusting in yourself enough and you think oh someone who's already there where I want to be can tell me how to get there so you listen and yeah. you listen to their system System and you implement the system and you go 200% because we cannot do 100%. No, we do 200%. <laughs> uh, so we do everything that they are telling us and then some and we go to every meeting and we ask all of the questions and we are a very eager, very motivated student. And then still crickets. <laughs> right? Exactly. Nothing and burnout and exhaustion and the fatigue and our confidence plays peekaboo with us and we think we can't do it and we have this imposter syndrome get creep up because we're doing business someone else's way not our way <laughs> yeah and they hook in on that because then when you try and talk to them about it it's like wait, wait, you're doing it wrong my system is perfect. My system works. So you're doing it wrong, which then further, you know, fuels our feeling of that we're not good enough or that we're not enough, or we actually really don't know what we're doing. Even when we're doing such simple things as following someone's example, we screw it up because we are masters at self-blame and looking within ourselves for fault, not for strength not for gifts, not for everything that we can do and are doing and are awesome at. No, we look within for faults. And I, I also just want to note that I think that that is a beautiful quality of sensitive empaths, that we are self-reflective, that we will consider other people's reflections, that we will try on for size what other people have to contribute to us, that we are open and if we're not careful, our openness can be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, you know, I, um, I think we've been coaching similar timeframes. I started in 2014 and one of the first investments that I made, I signed up for a year long coach training program, but within that program, I was also partnered with a coach who I worked with every year for the whole first year of my business. And I've worked with a coach ever since. And I was so grateful to be working with a coach from day one of starting my business because having that partnership to help me connect with my intuition, connect with my model, my approach, what I wanted to build, my vision, I feel like it, while it didn't protect me from all the business investments that I did make, I feel like it helped prevent so many out of alignment partnerships or programs that I would have, that I would have said yes to otherwise out of fear. Fear is a very strong motivator. Usually our decisions are either based in fear or in love. Those are actually the two choices that we have when it comes down to deciding. Are we doing something because we are afraid of something, about afraid of losing something or getting something we don't want or hurting someone? Eh? Or are we doing it because it feels inspired before it's, it, because it lights us up on the inside just thinking about it because we think, 
think, ooh, you know, I, I deeply, I cannot explain it, but I deeply feel on the inside that this is the right thing to do for me at this moment. And that's the whole intuition thing when you connect with your heart and you make decisions feeling like that. But usually we have insecurities and fears, and that is usually stronger, uh, especially when we're starting out and we still feel like we have a lot to learn. And who are we? We're just looking around the corner and, and we're brand new to all of this. So we listen to all the experiences. And I've also had a coach from the beginning, but I had to go through two different coaches before I landed on my third coach, which was a really good match because the first two were coaches that were just doing their agenda and pushing their, their agenda, but also their fears on me, which was really not a good match. And the third one was a godsend. He just asked the right types of questions and that's also the type of coaching or mentoring that I like to do where you don't tell people what to do no you just ask questions and trying to get clarity because in the end all of the answers are already inside of us and when you find someone who can help you unlock the answers that are already within you then you found the right type of person that can help you move into the direction that's actually right for you. And they're not pushing their agenda. They're not pushing their programs or their knowledge, their wisdom. No, they're helping unlock you step mm -hmm. by step, bit by bit to your own genius. Mm -hmm. And let's just set the story straight right there that that is the true definition of a coach. Yes. You know, I, I used to be a coach trainer and a mentor coach, and I, I have very strong opinions about the coaching industry and everything you just shared is at the heart of what coaching is all about. And if you're looking for a coach, I highly encourage you really check out the International Coaching Federation's website and explore the definition of, of coaching and what it's all about. Because I think, again, coming back to the marketing strategy, uh, the, the coaches who market themselves perfectly, who have all the right words to say, who speak to all of your pain points, they may not actually be the ones who are going to help unlock your genius. They may just be the ones that will help you pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the stories I keep hearing and because then I meet with potential clients and they all have similar stories like, why should I trust you? Why should you then be the one that has the right answer? And people have told me this often and I believe them or and they had the perfect marketing and then uh, they invest in it and then they just cannot hold up their end of the of the bargain, their end of the agreement and they portrayed themselves as better, more beautiful, more knowledgeable, more everything. And then when it's time to actually deliver, it's like a balloon that just <laughs> flutters away. And that leaves you as the buyer of their services or their products disillusioned. And because of our nature, um, when we haven't done self-work or we haven't done the right self-work, we blame ourselves. We look at ourselves and, and we are um, disappointed in ourselves for falling into this trap again. And then uh, that, that uh, harsh voice that we all have usually starts talking and starts uh, meddling in, in everything and voicing an opinion. And um, I think it's a stage that most of us need to go through in order to learn to trust your intuition, to circle back to your intuition, because I am guessing that anybody who resonates with this, anybody that has a similar experience, experience that with like this that if you look back if you think back and you think the times I trusted my gut I have never been sorry for the decision I made but the times that I doubted my gut when I didn't do it or when I felt I needed to do something and I didn't do it or I did it anyway when I felt I shouldn't be doing it those are usually the moments that we regret I completely agree. And um, I also, I'm just mindful that when we enroll clients from fear, right? When, we, when we're selling our clients from this place of fear and we're going to help them overcome this fear, then they're coming to the relationship with that fear embedded, with yes. that fear ingrained. And so 
that's what you're welcoming. You're not welcoming their potential and their, their future possibilities. You're welcoming their fear. And so, um, I think we're really, uh, we're, we're recreating these dynamics that we're, we're not committed to. And I think that is, that is the promise of hype marketing. That is not the mm-hmm. promise of, of humane marketing, of empathic yeah. marketing. I agree. It's just, it's following trick. It's, it's psychology, it's uh, manipulation, what they also do in advertisements. And well, if you had a cushy job and you had a lot of savings, then you have money enough to hire a marketing team and they can do everything perfectly and then lend you those clients. But if you then cannot deliver what you're promising, then that's still a serious problem. And it's a problem that's becoming a bigger and bigger problem in the coaching industry and that not enough people in my opinion are addressing in a way that's actually constructive and moving towards more um, authentic empathic uh, true coaches and their message and that's a shame because this way you're blinded by all of the advertisements and stuff of the people that probably are not going to help you and though you cannot see the forest uh, through the trees right that's a saying in in in, in dutch and you cannot find the real gem that's really matching with you because of all these uh people and their messages and yeah i think that's it's a growing problem in our industry it it really is. I find myself more often than not these days when I talk to new folks about coaching and I ask if they've ever worked with a coach before and they share these really hard experiences. I find myself apologizing on behalf right. of my industry because, you know, coaching has been deeply transformative in every aspect of my life and continues mm-hmm. to be. And um and I feel so sad for these folks who may have one bad experience and then close themselves off from the possibility of working with a coach because of um, this one bad apple. Mm-hmm. And that's that's I, that's heartbreaking for me. It's a, it's very sad, and and that's a, one of the whys behind these talks and this channel, right? Because this is a way of already getting to know me you uh what we stand for what we like to talk about tapping into our energy um and it's enough to at least determine oh i like their topic or i like the way they express themselves i like their energy i want to know more and then the next step should be um exploring uh, maybe more videos or blog posts if we write them or podcast or uh, the website all the while using your sensing ability your intuition to feel what does this do with me when I watch more of her when I read more of her does that make me who or does that make me Mm. (laughs) right because these are very um very good indicators but i think the biggest problem and that's also coming back to to our topic is that a lot of people are so disconnected from their intuition and from even feeling it, let alone deciphering what it means, what it's trying to tell us. What are your experiences in that area? Yeah. I mean, that's really, um, that's really why I offered the title rest because I think that rest is one of the ways in which I have connected with that intuitive voice in a, in a brand new way, because truly I never used to give myself the chance to rest. Mm-hmm. I used to be so activated by my fear, by that hustle mentality, by that drive to be ambitious, to prove that I was enough, to prove that I was deserving, to prove that I could do it, that I was just in fight or flight all the time, right? Mm-hmm. That I was just in, um, in my, in my, in my activated nervous system, just rushing day to day, trying to do the next thing that someone else told me to do, that there was really no chance for my intuition to emerge. And Mm. I would say, um, I really had that breakthrough in connecting with my intuition during the pandemic. And truly that's not even that many years ago, right? This would have been in Mm. 2020 for me, 
but I signed up for a year long Kundalini yoga teacher training. Mm -hmm. And um, there were some very rigorous uh, meditation components as part of this training where we had to do a uh, two 40 day meditation challenges, sadhanas they're called. So the first one was 40 consecutive days of meditating for 11 minutes. And then the second one was 40 consecutive days of meditating for 31 minutes. And our teacher, bless her heart, was very rigorous. So Mm -hmm. if you missed one day, whether it was on day 10 or day 39, you had to start over, which happened to me during the 31 minute meditation challenge. But I was so grateful for um, the reverence with which she brought to her teachings because Mm -hmm. I had a massive life-changing breakthrough in my relationship to meditation. And it's truly when I meditate, when I'm on the yoga mat, when I take my dogs out for a walk uh, without my iPod (laughs) or my, my iPhones and my ear pods, um, or when I'm journaling that I now have this connection, this relationship with uh, a deeper voice than I had literally ever given myself the opportunity to tune in to Mm. before i love that you're sharing that and it's it's very relevant i'm pretty sure that a lot of you out there that are listening and watching can resonate with this because i i definitely am and uh, i i read an article actually today that was about time and and that we not only have our working time that's already cramped full with meetings and appointments and deadlines and goals and stuff which can be very stressful but now that also our free time needs to be completely booked and planned uh, with tr- day trips uh, out to dinner spa days holidays hiking trips biking trips uh, you name it you know most of our free time is now also work time it's not work work time it's private work time but it's still working time because we're still doing and doing and doing and that's what i see with a lot of people that end up in a severe burnout they only have one um one gear left and it's just going 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 mm-hmm. and there is no rest in it anymore and uh, for me it, it deepens with uh, the, the pandemic but I already started uh, by walking in nature every day now I walk um not an hour but somewhere between one and a half three hours every day amazing it has massively expanded and i love the meditative walk the 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 quietness of nature the soaking in the energy uh sometimes i do actually meditation sitting sometimes i do walking meditations i've discovered i can also do that together and then still completely go inside Um, And the yoga every morning are things that really help quiet the mind. And besides that, there are just also some days where I think I cannot people today. I don't want to do anything. I unplug the phone. I unplug the doorbell. And some days I just binge watch something on TV because then I have apparently a lot to process and to heal in the background. So I, I often feel like I have two brains. And someone told me this week that that's actually true. Your left brain and your right brain. And most people only use one. It's either left brained or right brain, but I use both of them. That means that sometimes they can annoy each other. And the right brain <laughs> is annoying the left brain. And then both of them cannot do their job. So by distracting one part of my brain with binge watching something, the other part of my brain does the healing or the thinking or whatever other things are necessary in my brain. And that creates a balance that helps me get through certain things. Um, But it took a while to discover all of these things about yourself. Yeah. There's a, um, there's a book that I really love called do nothing, how to break away from overworking, overdoing and under living by Celeste Headley. She's a, she's a researcher here in the States. Mm -hmm. And she talks about how some of our greatest scientists and uh, some of our kind of greatest figures in history, they were, um, they had reverence for their naps. They would take, you know, Einstein, he took a four hour siesta every mm-hmm. single day. He literally worked for less than a half day. Now, I think that that is a privilege that not all of us live with today, but I think that there's really 
something something to be said for that. The idea that some of our greatest achievers and scientists over the 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 generations rested more than they worked. Now, I will say that I actually take uh I don't like her title do nothing because I think that rest is an active process. I think that for those of us who feel like we have to do nothing, that that's often a coping strategy, right? From burnout yes. or exhaustion or fatigue. And that rest is an active practice, whether it's nature walking or grounding or meditating or journaling or just sitting mindfully. Mm -hmm. But you have to start somewhere. So if that looks like doing nothing and carving out some time to just do nothing every day, that is certainly a place to begin. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's a, a great love affair with learning how to rest. Yes, because what people call do nothing usually means that the body is doing nothing, but the mind is still making <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Because when we physically do nothing and we park our butt on the couch, then we are physically not doing anything. But we're still thinking about what that person said and how we should have responded. And maybe all the things that we have to face when we go back to Monday and all of the other things that are still on your to do list and maybe everything on the birthdays that are coming up in the rest of the month. And you think, Ooh, right? Totally. <laughs> so you're not doing nothing. You're still being a triathlon performer but in your head so i think uh resting the actual doing nothing is is quieting the mind and quieting the, the mind that doesn't happen by itself quieting mm -hmm. the mind is something that you actively need to uh, inspire to to uh, go after and uh, meditating uh, walking in nature yoga qigong uh, tai chi uh, all of these things are gateways into quieting the mind so if people by doing nothing meant absolutely nothing the body and the mind doing absolutely nothing which basically is meditation <laughs> then doing nothing would be perfect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I mean I could not agree with you more and I feel like just to keep it real I want to share with your audience that even those of us like yourself and myself who are active practitioners in this, we still fall into traps because I went on a yoga retreat just last month, which is, um, it conflicted with a, one of our chats. And I came home from that yoga retreat connecting with so many more layers of my own intuition that I had become disconnected from because I, uh, I thought I was resting but truly, I was resting at one level, but there were so many other di dimensions that I was um, I was disconnected from. And it really took unplugging and taking four days away from technology and my phone and email and text mm. messages. Like I literally put my phone on airplane mode um, for me to realize that, oh, wow, like there was there was a reason I came here. There was a reason I carved out this time. I know exactly what you mean. And in, in 2018 was an extremely difficult year for me. In February, I lost five people in two weeks. So no matter how well prepared you are, no matter how many tools you are, and I was a, a burnout coach in that year still, uh, I almost ended up in a burnout because of all the grief and everything that was coming to me. And then also needing to keep the balls up in your business and being there for your clients. And it just it all became too much. I was really on the verge of a burnout and there was shame on that because how can a burnout coach end up in a burnout, right? And I discovered that, that there is no shame on that because even with all my knowledge and all my tools five deaths who mean the world to you in two weeks is massive <laughs> there isn't anybody who cannot be affected by that and uh, when I felt like I really didn't I couldn't go on I went to an Ayurvedic retreat for two weeks and it was including everything, daily treatments, massages, uh, sauna, special food, uh, teas, uh, everything, and disconnecting from uh, technology for two weeks. Nothing, blissfully nothing. And in the beginning, it was very 
ooh, you know, very unrest and, and stuff. And by the end of the two weeks, I felt like it had saved me. I felt very much connected to myself with my deeper internal self, with a lot of things I had lost sight of. I had uh, restarted doing things I really loved doing, like long walks in nature, uh, reading a lot, taking naps whenever my body said, well, I could rest my eyes for a while without having any judgments about it. And it completely changed the, the way I run my business. And now when somebody cancels last minute before, I would have been upset. Like, how can you be so disrespectful to my time? And uh, when you cancel last minute, it's it's really not great. And now I think, oh, it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. And then I have the choice. I can either do something on my never ending to-do list. And sometimes I think, yeah, I have a shit ton of things I can do on my to-do list, but it, my body says go outside or my body says take a massage or something completely different. And the in-between period, I felt guilt that I would do it, but I would still feel a little bit guilty about doing it. And now I've reached the point where I think, well, if this is what feels like what I need to do, then this is what I'm doing and I'm feeling awesome about it. And that was a real game changer. Mm. Yeah, I'm just hearing that regardless of whether uh, whether you're listening and you're a novice or you're an experienced practitioner, like there is value in taking breaks and in detoxing and in yes. unplugging in order to reconnect from a different place. Exactly. And I am so sorry for your losses. I can't even imagine what that time in your life must have been. And it sounds like it really awakened you to your calling. Oh, no, that had all already happened before that. Oh. <laughs> it was a different <laughs> shift into a higher gear. And it's, it's yeah, some people have a journey that needs several have, uh, heavy uh, emotional moments to shift into higher gears. And apparently I'm one of these people. I always thought you only had one dark night of the soul, but I know for certain, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but this has been an amazing talk and I can imagine that everybody out there that's listening and watching to this is, is feeling very inspired because I'm feeling very inspired and I think we talked about some amazing things. So if you feel that way, then it would be amazing if you could uh, subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave a comment, and it would be even more amazing if you would share this episode in whatever social media channel that you're finding it so that the people that you are connecting with also can listen to this message if they feel intuitively called to listen to it because there are a lot of people that are in these types of situations struggling with these types of things and if we can reach only one of them and make a difference then the mission of this episode has already succeeded but I can also imagine that you're thinking like I want to meet these women so Everybody knows where they can find me. And if not, it's below this video. But where can people find you, Catherine? I would love for people to start the journey with my podcast, The Prosperous Empath. I'm all over the interwebs, but I think the my podcast is um, an intimate relationship. You can have an intimate relationship there with me. <laughs> I love that. And, and I agree. It's it's a perfect way. So podcasts or TV shows like we're having today are perfect ways in getting to know someone on an intimate level because you're listening to their innermost thoughts and their wisdom and their energy seeps through and the way they are expressing themselves. And that if you use your intuition again, you can start to feel if that resonates with you, if you connect with that energy. So I'll make sure that the link to your podcast is also probably below this video otherwise somewhere to the sides or up but <laughs> somewhere around this video you will find all the links that we've talked about today and uh, I we, uh, would like to end this episode today with a really big thank you to you Catherine for being here for having this wonderful talk with me and touching so many of these very important topics so thank you thank you it was honestly, just what I needed to remind myself of today. 
<laughs> See, intuitively, we we connect and we do and talk about the things that we need, right? Totally. Yes. Thank I you so it. much. And you, listener, viewer out there, um, thank you for being here, for showing your love, for showing your support, for subscribing, liking, commenting, and asking all of your questions like you're always doing. It means the world to me. And I hope that you will tune in next week for next week's episode. But for today, I have nothing left to say besides have an amazing rest of your day. Talk soon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.